And we are live on Facebook. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another New Jersey Constitutional Republicans virtual conversation. It's my great privilege today to have the next governor of New Jersey on with me this morning, my good friend, Jack Cetarelli. Jack, good morning. Hey, good morning, JR. Uh, we're in travels here on the way to the next campaign stop. The sun is bright, so I apologize for the glare. That's fine. It doesn't surprise me that you're on the go because what many people may not realize, Jack, is that you've been essentially on the go since June 7th of 2017. And uh, this, this campaign now is culminating and you're reaching the crescendo just at the right time. And a couple of months ago, we had a conversation and we were a little concerned about name recognition. I think that uh, you've, allevi you have alleviated that, uh, that issue. Uh, we have, Jr. We've worked very, very hard. Uh, we, we've uh, maximized the fundraising that's allowed here in New Jersey, matching Phil Murphy dollar for dollar and beating him the last five weeks in a row. That's allowed us to be in the air with our banner. It's allowed us to be on TV, radio, in your mailbox, digital, all the above. The name ID is there. The message is there. And I believe on Tuesday, the victory will be there. That's right. And of course, uh, we always learn, you and I being great sports lovers, we know that sometimes teams may lose. I believe that primary may be your only loss that you've ever suffered, but you've learned from it. You grew from it. You rolled up your sleeve and you decided that I'm going to go out and get this victory. And that's exactly what you've done. You've learned from one defeat. Well, as we all know, um, hey, JR, our, our favorite American political figure was Abraham Lincoln. He lost six elections before he won the presidency in 18 <laughs> and uh, lose this one. We're right where we need to be. And I couldn't be more pleased with the performance of the campaign team, the campaign that we've waged. And uh, we're right where we need to be here in the last 48 hours. We'll finish the job. That's right. And Jack, uh, you remember well in the late 80s and the early 90s with the um, coming down of communist Soviet, uh, the Soviet Union, uh, the break, the uh, the uh, destroying of the wall, uh, looking like Marxism was finished off. And yet we see a senator speaking in 92, 93, a Vermont independent named Bernie Sanders. And who would have thought? after all this time that this man would be coming to New Jersey to represent Phil Murphy and his neo-Marxist agenda. JR, it's just amazing to me that they would bring somebody like Bernie Sanders into New Jersey. Um, and here he is talking about progress. We have the highest property taxes in the nation. It's the worst state in the country in which to do business. We have one of the highest unemployment rates in the nation. We lead the nation in nursing home deaths. Phil Murphy's failed us left and right, including his response to recent tropical storm Ida. And you get a guy like Bernie Sanders coming in and talking about progress. Really? Is that progress? I don't think so. And you clearly make an excellent distinction between Phil Murphy and his Washington uh, elite, the elitist of the progressives and the Democratic Party, and your approach, which has been handshake to handshake, county to county, organization to organization. You've done it for the last four years. And um, I don't think Phil Murphy's ever met a farmer from Salem County or, a, uh, for, or from East Vineland or shook hands with anybody who's running a business on the Ocean City Boardwalk. Uh, yet you've done all these things, and it's indicative of the contrast between you and uh, Phil Murphy. Not only has he not met a Salem County farmer, JR, he doesn't care to. And, and that's the problem no. with Phil Murphy. I stand with everyday hardworking New Jerseyans. He stands with the special interest. As I say to New Jerseyans, I'm you, he's somebody else. And we see that time and time again, he fails to realize as the most diverse state in the country, uh, there are many ethnicities, races, creeds, colors, religions, and cultures all here in New Jersey. And every one of the viewpoints in each one of those respective communities is to be respected. It's not by Phil Murphy. Exactly. He discriminates, and uh, it's all about uh, racial identities and special interests. But, but Jack, let's cut to the quick here for a minute. We knew right from the very beginning that Phil Murphy was going to use New Jersey as a stepping stone to other political aspirations. That's why he still has this relationship with Obama and Joe Biden. It's not about New Jersey. It's never been about New Jersey. 
whereas you are from New Jersey, you've been here, you are New Jersey. Let's cut to the quick. Phil Murphy used this gubernatorial, uh, this gubernatorial position to further his uh, political aspirations for the future. That's the fact. Hey, I couldn't agree with you more, but in so doing, he also separated us all the more. You saw that in his closing statement at the second debate when he made references to Confederate flags and uh, white supremacy. I call him the divider in chief. He incites class warfare. He pits us against one yeah. another. Uh, that's not what my leadership is all about. I've won seven races in this state, all seven times in races where Democrats outnumber Republicans because I talk about the issues that matter to most all of us, opportunity and security, the American dream. And when the election is over, I bring us all together. That's what leadership is supposed to do. Phil Murphy hasn't done that. That's right. That's right. And I believe you will. You know, Jack, if we looked at the debate as a heavyweight fight of rounds, round one, you definitely won on points. Round two, of course, um, when he did mention white privilege, and then your response, I believe, was the knockout punch um, that was delivered and really has, you know, led to this momentum that you've had in the with the campaign. You're on Fox News. You're talking to people all the time. The uh, emotion and the response you're getting at all of these different rallies, it's truly incredible, but I attribute it to your outstanding performance in the debate, and one Abraham Lincoln would be very proud of you. Well, JR, you and I uh, are, are great students of Abraham Lincoln, and there were the famous Lincoln-Douglas debates, and um, you know Lincoln distinguished himself, and that's the real opportunity for people to make a very stark compare and contrast, the two of us standing right there. I found him very defensive. Um, I found that he did not like to be challenged. Um, he has seen no. trouble with controlling his temper. And um, mm -hmm. I, I just thought, again, that closing statement in the second debate was really poking his finger in the eye of New Jerseyans. If you're, it was streaming live around the nation. I mean, if you're watching it, what are you thinking about the people of New Jersey? My goodness, it was an embarrassment. Right. And Jack, what's really encouraging, we have constitutional Republican candidates for assembly and Senate, Ed Durr, uh, Patrick Ryan, Steve Pacraduni, and there are others uh, who are uh, on the ballot with you in your column who need to be supported. And it's very encouraging to see these men talk and women talking about natural rights and restoring the state constitution and the preeminence of that in securing natural rights. It's more than just property taxes this time. It's about natural rights, right? It is about natural rights. They've never been under a greater threat, uh, JR. And I can't tell you, I've never seen a better group of, of uh, legislative candidates all up and down the state in all 40 districts. I'm proud to be their standard bearer. I'm proud to be on the ticket with them. And I think there's going to be a, a lot of smiles and surprises on Tuesday night. I really do. Now, Jack, let me ask you a question, and this is geared towards those social conservatives out there who may be a little bit apprehensive. They may be on the fence. What do you say to them to make sure that they put vote for you on Tuesday? Social well, conservatives first, in New Jersey. Hey, listen, I, I'm with them, and, and I understand, and, and we will protect those rights that you're talking about, but we have to get rid of the evil of Phil Murphy, if you will. This is a guy, for example... Yes that doesn't believe that parents should be notified if their teenage daughter is seeking an abortion. My goodness, we go with our children to get their tonsils out and we're not gonna have parents notified if their daughter is seeking an abortion. He believes in abortion in months seven, eight, and nine, right up until the day of birth. That's not what New Jersey believes. And so we have to fight this. And I think it's just one of those great issues here in New Jersey that distinguishes the two candidates. And uh, I'm on the side of the majority of New Jerseyans who don't agree with his positions on issues like those. That's right, Jack. And the other thing I tell my compatriots, uh, social conservatives, that Jack is very much like Lincoln and that he is approaching this with very moderate approach. He understands uh, the he needs to be elected to be able to make an effective, uh, to be an effective executive uh, and executing the laws. And um, I'm more like a Thaddeus Stevens who's going to be on your back. And I'm constantly telling you we have to uh, take in social conservative ideas. But you listen. And I, you and always JR, listened. Listen. Uh, yeah. And I'd be disappointed if you weren't, Jr. But again, this guy's right. an extremist. As I've gone up and yes. down the state, show me anyone who believes we should be teaching gender ID and sexual orientation to kindergartners. 
And with regard to promoting inclusivity, that's right. Why can't we, why can't we do that with the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Martin Luther King judged people by the content of their character, not by their attributes. And certainly those very sacred 29 words in our Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that those we are created by our endowed by our creator rate rather with certain unalienable rights, yes. life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right. Amen. And Jack, uh, one more question. And uh, then I have something for you, a gift for you, of course. But uh, first of all, talk to those second amendment, those legal gun owners out there who are maybe on the fence and are very frustrated with the, the um, infringements on their second amendment rights. What do you tell them? Why do they need to vote for you on Tuesday? Well, our legal gun owners across the state, JR, need to come out. I have the endorsement of the uh, Outdoor Alliance. I have great support within yep. the NRA, and uh, they need to come out because if it was up to Phil Murphy, he would repeal the Second Amendment. I will certainly uh, repeal the 10 magazine round limit. It has basically rendered perfectly legal firearms obsolete. Um, I'll allow people to do process with regard to getting their gun permit mm -hmm. applications approved more quicker. And we'll certainly have a conversation on carry and conceal, particularly for those dangerous professions that Phil Murphy mocked at the debate. He mocked them. Yes, he did. No question. And uh, I do have a, a gift for you here as you wind up this campaign. Of course, we can't go without talking about uh, Mr. Lincoln. Laws of nature and nature's God reveal right from wrong. Lincoln said it's the eternal struggle between these two principles, right and wrong. They are the two principles that have stood face to face from the beginning of time and will ever continue to struggle. And I would say, Jack, that your campaign against Phil Murphy is genuinely a fight between right and wrong, and you are on the side of right. Well, as we know, know um, Jr. the famous speech that catapulted Lincoln to the presidency took place at Cooper Union in New York, and it was yes. coined that right makes might. And uh, we should That's always right. stand with what is right and, um, and stand strong in so doing. That's right. And he was giving the contrast that the Democrats said might makes right. And they still do to this day think that that might and that power. And we saw Phil Murphy um, utilize that power to an unprecedented degree over the COVID-19 um, pandemic. But Jack, I want to thank you for joining me. You're getting ready for another stop. And I just want to say to you that think about Mariano Rivera now. Yeah, I want you to finish strong. We got another inning here, another inning in the next two days. You need to finish strong. Uh, take the side out in three, three strikeouts here and finish strong. You've run a great campaign. Congratulations. And I certainly hope to see you on Tuesday evening. I look forward to it, JR. I look forward to celebrating with you a victory here for New Jersey. And thank you for always remaining accessible, Jack. And that's why you'll make an outstanding governor. Um, you will be a man who will listen to all of the people. And um, let's, let's get the victory. Thank you, JR, for all that you do. I appreciate it, Jack. And uh, you take care and uh, get a little water for that voice. Will do. And by the way, JR, if you're able to make it up Tuesday night, you're going to see Jake. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I can't wait to shake his hand. And I also want to see Jeff. Is Jeff going to be there? Oh, for sure. Jeff I'm will sure be there. He will. Oh, I can't wait to see both those gentlemen, especially Jake. He's what, I've, what are, you've got to be so proud of everything that he's doing. All four children are wonderful, JR. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. I can't wait. To I are. I, and I need to meet your lovely wife. I heard her on Steve DiOrio yesterday down here in South Jersey. So uh, I, I can't wait to meet the whole family. Well, same goes here. All right, Jack, bring home the victory. All right, JR, thank you. Take care. Be careful with travel. Will do. God bless.